Somebody asked about the future of semantic search. There's this divide between semantic and algorithmic, but the reality is semantics comes from very, very, very smart algorithms. What we're doing in search is trying to extract meaning from a lot of meaningless data. And Arkady is going to talk about something that is probably pretty meaningless to most of, most of you, but he's going to make meaning out of it. Okay. Introducing Arkady Yan of yeah. Yandex. Thanks, Esther. So I, I'm not going to talk about business now. It's uh, about technology at best, maybe something beyond technology. And it's very quick. Uh, and I will start with an announcement. Yandex officially has become a member of CERN, the organization behind the Large Adron Collider, which you all know. So now we, we have a right to announce it at last. And why we did it and what we're doing there. Uh, yeah. Before I continue, there is a question. Are there any physicists in this audience? Or oh, just three? No, I'm safe then. OK. So all, as you know, 14 billion years ago, there was a Big Bang. And our theory of physics more or less explain what happened between now and then, except, uh, except for the last fraction of a second. We understand everything except for this last fraction. And the problem is that we don't understand what is there because it's, tr it's hard to prove anything there because to experiment in, in that area, you need to, have to spend a lot of energy. And it's hard to get so much energy to experiment in, the, in, in this small area. Uh, that's why we had no, almost no experimental proofs of any theories since late 80s. And a lot of theories emerged for the last 30 years, dozens of different theories. Uh, and for example, this is just a couple of examples, the standard physics model and the supersymmetry model. But it's just two examples. There is strings and superstrings. There's a lot of different families of theories. And the only way to prove which, which theory describes the universe best is to experiment. And we couldn't experiment for 30 years. So it's really a billion euro question because it's expensive to experiment and it's also very important. What is experimental physics today? 500 years ago, it was like throwing something, having a ruler and a watch and writing the numbers, dividing one by another, and discovering uh, what? Uh, gravitation, for example. Uh, funny that f 50 years ago, in nuclear times, it was almost the same. They used the same ruler, and they measured the tracks on films made by physical particles. But the basic way was the same. You take a ruler and measure something and make a discovery. Today, it's a little bit different. Oops. Today, it takes at least two countries, Switzerland and France. It takes to dig a huge tunnel, uh, to, spend, to have a budget of one billion dollar euro a year, and to collide particles and then see what happens. And this is one change. Another change, which is principle, which is the core of the changes, is that they don't measure anything else, uh, anymore. What they do is they record the data. They collide the particles. They have sensors uh, and special cameras. And they just record the data to computers. And it's colliding and recording, colliding, recording, 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 recording. It's a huge amount of data. So today's experiment is collecting and processing data in the big data centers. That's how today's physics work. Yeah. OK. And there is a challenge there. 
there's a huge amount of data. And to prove or disapprove something, you need just three uh, events, we call it, in a billion. And these three events could, could prove a theory or disapprove a theory. And it's extremely hard to find these three events among billions. For example, I like the names they use in physics. They have good times there. So the beauty meson decay proves or disapproves one of the two theories, stand, the so-called standard model of physics or supersymmetry. If we see three decays in a billion, then the standard mo model still works. We don't need to change it. If there's 300 decays, it, we need to change it to something new, which is supersymmetry. Very important for physics and understanding the universe. But it's three out of a billion. And there could be two, two approaches to get the statistics. Three out of a billion means that if you have just several billion of events, you, have, you don't have enough statistics to, to say what, what's wrong, what's right. So the two approaches are either to have more measurement. In our case, it means to run a large other one collider for another two or three years and spend another two or three billion euro, or to have a better tool to, to see better. And a tool, in our case, is an algorithm because it's analysis of data. So they make they made 20 billion uh, measurements in Big Android Collider for the last two years. So to, pr to prove the standard, physic, uh, standard model of physics works, they need to find 60 occasions of decay, which is very rare. When another approach is to take something different, and this different is what we use. We, we, have, we at Yandex have a set of machine learning techniques, techniques, which we call matrix net. And this is like a super microscope. When you take a small amount of data and you can tell for sure whether it's proven or not. And it don't, you don't need to run the big Android, Android, Collide, Android, Android Collider for another three years. So we gave matrix net to CERN. And what's amazing is that the methods which we used for everyday tasks each of you have some screen in your pocket or on the desktop. And whatever you use there, everyday tasks, they are implemented by these, the same techniques, the same machine learning algorithms. Whether you're searching or you're targeted by advertising or you try to predict traffic jams, it's just everyday machine learning. And the same machine learning works for something much more serious. And it's amazing. And with the same algorithms, we can find the Higgs boson. It was found. We can tell where the antimatter disappeared. After one second after the, in one second after the Big Bang, the antimatter disappeared. And it's very important for all of our businesses. If it still exists somewhere and meet the matter, then we should annihilate. Uh, or the dark matter issue. 80% of the universe mass is lost some, somewhere. We cannot find it. So all these, the same methods which we use every day in our pocket devices are applicable here. And this is amazing. And actually, I am very proud that Yandex Matrix, Matrix Net now works in CERN on all these global universal problems. And this is the search for universe. Thank you.